Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to NanoSef. In the last video, I gave you guys a tour of all the stuff you get when you scaffold a new Vue.js project. And then I proceeded to burn it all to the ground and replace it with a donkey fart box. That's right. But you might think, well, all that work and you're back where you started? Nah, not quite. Eh? Now, the donkey fart box isn't in the index.html. The index loads a script that runs an engine that processes this view to generate the donkey fart box dynamically at runtime. Yes! And that, as we know, is much better. This sentence was designed to trigger people with a very specific kind of autism, and I, I hope it worked. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, okay, so, no, we did not go through all this effort for this. No, we want the good shit. And by the good shit, I mean Vutify, because I, I can't be asked to, like, design a new style, style all a bunch of components and layouts and typography. No, Jesus Christ, no. Give me something that just gives me an out-of-the-box experience that looks okay, pretty good. Right, so let's jump in there. Let's get her done. In PM install Vutify. That should get her. Uh, then what do you got to do? Remember we had another little plug plug-in boy in here, and we we got rid of him. That was the Dev Tools one. Well, we can actually put the Vutify one in here, and it might. I don't know if it's necessary, but it, it might make your file size a little smaller if you care about that. Actually, we need to install Vite plug plugin. Vutify. We install this boy as well. And then we can import Vutify from Vite plugin Vutify. And we can do Vutify. We can add this to the plugins. So this handles something called tree shaking, which is basically don't include source, don't include code for the components you're not using. Seems like a, a good thing. And also auto import. So you don't have to, if you're using a component from Beautify, you don't have to manually say import it. It just automatically figures out that you need it. So that's nice, right? We would like to have that. Now, the other place we need this stuff is in main. So let's import create Beautify from Beautify. Then we create the app. We do app dot use well let's do const viewtify is equal to create viewtify and you can pass in an object with a whole buttload of options we'll just give it one option which is the blueprint that's kind of like a the theme that it's going to use to design all of its widgets and stuff so we want the MD2 blueprint. So that's material design. So Beautify components are all based on the material design system, which I don't know. It's like a it's like a way of it's a guideline for making interfaces, I think what it is. And so we want to use the one that's based on material design too, because that's the one that I like. Then we create the app, we use Beautify, plug it into the system, and then we mount it. So there. Now we have Beautify all set up in there. Actually, not really. We also have to import the styles. Otherwise, it's going to look funky. Like all the components will be there, but they're going to look very strange. So we need to import Beautify styles. And there, there we should have everything. It should be all good to go. Now we can start using Beautify stuff. Now, let's get rid of these globals. These are for the donkey fart box. And we're not going to, we don't do that anymore here. We're a ser serious shop. There's generally a few constants that you're going to have in all of your markup when you're using Beautify. You want to wrap everything in a V app component. All the Beautify components start with V dash something. So very easy to distinguish them. So you put a V app. Then your V app is going to contain all of your layout stuff. If you had like a title, if you have a sidebar, if you have a thing on the bottom. But your actual content is going to go into V main, which by default takes up the rest of the space after all your layout stuff is done doing its thing. And then inside of vMain, you probably want to wrap that all up in a V container. And that just enables some the bullshit for like using a grid to lay stuff out. It's just it's just nice to put it in a container. And that's it. App main container and then here's your page in here. That's the simplest that you can get really. 
All right, let's do like a little test just to see what's going on. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to put everything in a card when I'm making a UI. It's little islands of content that you can stuff your, your crap into. So you can make like a card, you can make a paragraph, you can put some lorem ipsum in that bad boy there. Maybe like another paragraph in the same card, why not? And you know what? You can have another card as a treat, but only one paragraph this time, don't get carried away. So what does that look like? Now well, we gotta run our dev server first, otherwise we're not gonna see crap. Ah, okay. Well, there's a little to be desired. The cards are kind of bumping up against each other. They're, they're bumping and they're grinding. Uh, but you can see it's, it's neat. It keeps the content kind of in the middle of the page. So if you get like a really wide one, it's not going to blow out, stretch your content out like crazy, which is nice to have. That's the that's the container at work there. But I don't like this spacing. And that's easy enough to fix. I mean, you go into your V card and you're like, okay, class. And we got a bunch of utility classes that you can apply to things to, to modify their styles easily. So you can set the margin and the padding of any element with some shorthand here. And I want to say, well, add some margin to the bottom. Give me like level three. They go up like one, two, three, four, and which increasing sizes. So you can say, give me some margin bottom three. All right, we got like a little space between them here. That's not bad. Now it's a little up against the edge of the card here with the text. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that either. So we could do like padding in the Y level two, padding in the X level three, give more padding on the edges. And we could just copy that for the other card as well. We save that. Ah, oh, yeah, now it's looking a little, a little less claustrophobic there. Okay. So there you got your, your cards on there. Now I'm not a big fan of light mode. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dark mode guy for when I'm making something. So let me show you a little, a little neat trick, one weird trick. Uh, so we're gonna make a little bit of reactive data, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more about this in the next video. I think we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a real dynamic interface. But for right now, just trust me. I'm just let, let me cook for a second here. So let's import ref from view. That's the thing that makes a reactive object. Very important. And we'll call this one dark mode equal to ref, we'll start off false. So we got a little reactive piece of data here and we can bind that to the UI such that when the UI changes, the data changes and when the data changes, the UI changes. Nice. Why do we want this? Well, so VApp has a prop called theme and we can bind some dynamic data to this to get the theme to change depending on you know what this variable is. So let's do, dark mode ternary so if it's dark mode we should be dark otherwise should be light simple enough and then down here in v main after the container let's put a v button mm, v toggle button as i believe put a label on it dark mode so we can bind the value of this toggle to the dark mode data and so now when dark mode is true, the toggle will be on, and when dark mode is false, the toggle will be off. And when you in interact with the toggle, you will change the mode. And when you change that mode, the mode that the V app is set on will change, and then the whole damn thing should change, just like magic. A little birdie in my ear is telling me it's not V toggle button, it's V switch. So we'll just, just change that up a bit. Now, there should be label, but my IntelliSense is being a bit of a jerk right now, so we'll just do it like this. Dark mode. All right. Oh. We got a little switch here. Should we push it? Let's push it. Oh my god. Oh, that's much nicer on the eyes. Yeah, I like this a lot better. So that's a little a little side benefit of if you build your app with Beautify, automatically you can allow your user to choose between dark mode and light mode. It's kind of sweet. It's all just built right in there. There's one more thing that annoys me about this Beautify, and this is just it working as intended. It always has this scroll bar here. Even if you, the content is not big enough to go outside the window, it still has the scroll bar. That's kind of annoying. So the fix is easy. You just, for HTML and body, you turn overflow to auto, and that, that gets her done. 
Uh, this doesn't work by itself. And that's just because the Beautify styles take pref precedence. And the reason why they do is because they're imported after these ones. So if we import our globals after Beautify, now ours can override Beautify. And now there's no more scroll bar. Give me back my dark mode. Nice. And if you're like, mm, this feels still too wide for me. I like a narrower boy. We can do that. Right now it's kind of responsive, so it changes. But you're saying, I want a fixed kind of narrowness for my content in here. Go in our container. We could do like width equal to 800. And now width is uh, stuck at 800 here, which is OK, I guess. If that's what you want. That's what you got. But don't take, don't turn off dark mode. I'd like to give you a more like comprehensive and impressive demo of all the things you can do with Beautify. But honestly, like I, I can't be asked to just like make you interface that does nothing just to show off how pretty it can look. Like, ugh, no, ain't nobody got time for that. But I, what I do have is I have one that I've already made. So I've already because I told you I use this shit. I made like a this is a user interface I made. This is all made in Beautify. Like I might <laughs> it might look a little familiar here it's got cards because I like cards it's got dark mode because I like dark mode it only has dark mode in fact I don't have anything else but um, you know it's got like these button group switches those are cool this is cool you got a little status bar down here that I totally didn't just steal from VS code definitely different idea um, you got a sidebar here this is in the app the top level app view app dot view by the way and you got like different pages here to configure different parts of the settings. And you got this thing here. You can like put more widgets on the, this is an overlay for doing graphics performance monitoring. And you know, you can configure this stuff here and you can drag it around. So this is an example of something you could make that's a little more interesting than this. But I do want to make something just to demonstrate how the view reactivity works in like a data processing kind of standpoint. Because so far all we've seen is this, right? Just the, the, the single binding of dark mode to bind it to this switch, which also binds it to setting the, the theme of the whole app. So I want to give you like a a little more involved example just to show you how reactivity can work for you and then after we do that that'll be next video after we do that then we'll move on to how we can bind the front end to the C++ back end and have them communicate with each other because that's obviously you know number three on the list of stuff that we have to do until then thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did please click the like button it helps a lot and I will see you again with some more nanoceph